Hello class, this is section 5.1 and we are going to work through a matrix initial value problem example. So we have here our problem and it has linearly independent solutions x1, x2, x3, so it's a 3 by 3 matrix problem. And we have given our, we really have our three solutions. We are asked to find the specific solution given this initial condition. So let's uh, go about it. And first, let's write the general solution. The general solution is going to be x. It's going to be c1 times this plus c2 times the second solution. plus C3 times the third solution. Two plus T. And we are given the initial condition. So plug in zero. And we have that this entire thing is equal to x hat 0 or minus 10, 8, minus 12. And writing this down in terms of a matrix, we get simply that and this is our matrix initial value problem form. And goal, our goal is to diagonalize this matrix. So here's the thing we have to do. We have to use the row, elementary row operations to mess with this matrix to make it upper triangular. However, the, we have to keep in mind that any changes that we make to this matrix will also affect this vector on the right here. If we multiply the top row by 2, this top row has to be multiplied by 2 as well. If we switch the first and second rows of the matrix, the first and second rows of this vector will have to change as well. So one good thing to do is to, is to write it down in, in this form. So we have this matrix. But we draw a dotted line here. And also keep in mind the second matrix, the matrix of uh, initial conditions. So let's perform our operations to diagonalize the matrix on the left. So the first thing we can do is to notice that our second row, we really have a 0, 0, minus 4. So a good thing to do is to switch, switch rows. second and third row. It's a good place to start. And what we get is the first row stays the same, but we move the third row up, and we move the second row down. Right, and that matrix looks a lot more triangular now. So we just have to uh, get rid of one more one more uh, row. If we get rid of this, if we change this to zero, we're fine already. And there are several ways to do this. But let's just observe that the second row is all even. So perhaps it makes sense to divide it by two. And we have the first row being exactly the same. The second row becoming 1, minus 2, minus 1, minus 6. And the third row becoming the same. So it becomes clear now how to proceed. If you can just get rid of this 1 on the second row, we're done. So we can just subtract the first row by the second row.
And what this gets us is that, again, the first row remains the same. The second row, we subtract 1 minus 1 is 0, minus 2 minus 0 is minus 2, and minus 1 minus minus 4 is going to be plus 3. And for the last equation, minus 6 minus minus 10 is going to be 4. And the last row is again the same. But now we have an upper triangular matrix. As you can see, that only the upper triangle is non-zero. And we are done here. So what remains is to figure out what our C1 and C2 and C3 are. So we can write this down. So this is 1C1 plus 0C2 plus minus 4C3 equals minus 10. And we have minus 2C2 plus 3C3 equals 4, and minus 4C3 equals 8. And back substitution becomes easy. So minus 4C3 equals 8 implies that C3 is equal to minus 2. But plugging that into the second equation, we get that minus 2C2 plus 3 times minus 2 equals 4, or minus 2c2 equals 4 plus 6, minus 2c2 equals 10, c2 equals to minus 5, and this implies that if we plug in the first equation, we get c1 plus minus 4, times c3, which is minus 2, equals minus 10, and thus c1 is equal to minus 10 minus 8 equals minus 18. And these are our solutions. c1 is minus 18, c2 is minus 5, c3 is minus 2.